Hello everyone, this will be the last video that I film in this shed because I'm going to build a new one. But more on that at the end of the video because first I'd like to show you the performance of my solar panel and water cooled AC unit. Okay, so I did all the solar panel measurements when it was about high summer. Ideally I would have tested it at the 21st of June, but the week before and the week after the 21st it was very cloudy here. So I eventually got a good reading on the 27th of June, but we'll come to that later. First of all I like to show you the difference in the angle of the panel between midwinter and high summer. I find it quite fascinating. So there was a small problem with the panel, and that is that the panel became very hot when I heated up the hot tub to 38 degrees with the wood stove. And because for now this is just a dumb system with timers to turn on the circulation pumps, that 38 degree water was also circulating through the panel which made the inside of the panel heat up and therefore the polycarbonate sheet heated up and expanded approximately 3 millimeters. So that's 1.5 millimeters per side which created too much shear stress for the caulking to handle. So I put some more caulking on the outside edges so it will be under compression rather than shear. Maybe later this will need some more reinforcement but for now it works. Because the panel was hermetically sealed to prevent a buildup of moisture inside, I initially thought that the polycarbonate had come off because the air inside expanded. So I opened up the hole at the bottom that I earlier used to ventilate the panel with dried air and made a cap over it to prevent rain from coming in. This way the panel could not overpressurize. But I later realized that all the corners were loose and in a case of overpressurization there would have probably been only one loose spot and not all four corners. But it could very well be a combination of these two problems. So for now it's open to the atmosphere and it works fine like this but maybe later I will install a one-way valve at the top right and the bottom left corner so when the panel cools down it draws in air at the top through a desiccant and when it heats up it blows air out at the bottom. The desiccant can be put into a black container so it will be regenerated by the sun. But that's something for a later video. Ok, so now we switch to the water cooled air conditioning unit. It's just a standard mobile AC unit that normally had an air hose to the outside to remove the heat. And I made it water cooled so I can use the residual heat to heat up my hot tub. If you like to see how I made this AC unit water cooled, there's a link in the description just for you. So as you can see I've insulated and covered it up so it looks nicer and doesn't leak too much heat back into the room. Ok, so cold water that comes from the tub flows in here through a pump that's turned on when the AC unit is turned on and gets heated by the AC and flows out here past this atmospheric expansion vessel which doubles as an air vent. There's a hose at the top, in case the expansion vessel overflows it will just flow into the gutter. Same as the condensation water that comes from the AC that flows through this hose. I've put these hoses through my roof so I don't need to keep a window open at all time. And this all looks a bit rough, but it's temporary. So this is the heat exchanger, which still has its circulation pump, to pump hot tub water through the heat exchanger at one side and is turned on by this timer switch. But the other pump is now near the panel so I can control if I want the cooling water to circulate through the panel, the AC or both. And this is the manifold through which the panel and the AC are both connected to the heat exchanger at the hot tub. So we have two thermometers, one here and one here, a pressure gauge, two one-way valves, two pumps, one for the panel and one boost pump for the AC to increase the flow through the AC, a connection with a valve to fill the system with cooling water, two valves so I can disconnect the AC in the winter time, a flow meter so I can, together with the thermometers, measure the power output of both the panel and the AC. And last, an automatic air vent. So the water flows in here past the first thermometer and then can flow to the panel or the AC through these one-way valves. The one-way valves prevent water circulation through the panel if only the AC is turned on or through the AC when only the panel is turned on. Then it flows back in here from the panel or the AC through a flow meter, past the automatic air vent, past the second thermometer and back to the hot tub. Now this all works very well, but because the circulation of the panel is turned on by this timer switch, it also circulates the water through the panel when it's a cloudy day. 
which cools the hot tub down with about 200 watts. This is not terrible, but it means that if you have long periods of cloud cover, the hot tub will eventually be a cold tub. Therefore, I will later make it a temperature controlled system. Because in the winter time I had this system filled up with antifreeze, I initially also filled the AC with it, but it turned out to be very messy when the AC developed a small leak. I did not film that part, nor did I make pictures of it, because as you can imagine, having antifreeze on your floor in your house is quite a stressful event. So I cleaned up the mess, sealed up the leak, removed all the antifreeze from the whole system and filled it up with water. It still leaks a little at the point where the compressed cooling medium goes into the tank. Apparently the pipe becomes too hot for the caulking to handle, but it works for now and will improve it when the summer is over. So to make sure that all my measurements were as accurate as possible, I calibrated both the flow meter and the thermometers. I calibrated the flow meter by connecting the garden hose and setting the flow at precisely, approximately, more or less exactly the same flow rate as it did when the panel or the AC was on and then checked how much water had flown through. So for the panel it was 137.64 and for the AC it was 205.2 liters per hour. The thermometers I tested by putting them together in a bowl of hot water and see what the temperature difference was between them. So the output thermometer shows about 0.5 degrees Celsius lower than the input thermometer. So we have to add that 0.5 in our calculations. Okay, so then I could measure the performance and we will start with the solar panel. So I made a time lapse of the thermometers and the clock and finally at the 27th of June at 1.35 pm the temperature difference was 9.6 degrees. So with a flow rate of 137.64 liters per hour which is 38.23 milliliters per second times 4.19 joules per gram per kelvin is 116.2 joules per second times the temperature difference of 9.6 degrees is 1538 joules per second which is 1538 watt so the peak performance is around 1500 watt which is pretty close to the 1600 watt that we estimated okay so now to the performance of the ac that was a lot easier to measure because it has a more or less constant output so at one point i just took a picture of the thermometers and it showed a temperature difference of 8.8 .8 degrees. So with a flow rate of 205.2 liters per hour, which is 57 milliliters per second, times that 4.19 joules per gram per Kelvin, is 238.83 joules per second, times the temperature difference of 8.8 .8 degrees, is 2101.7 joules per second, which is 2101.7 watt. So the AC peak performance is around 2100 Watt, while it uses around 700 Watt, which is an efficiency of 3 to 1, which is not bad, but it could be a bit higher. Maybe the AC needs a small refill of refrigerant, or maybe there's just some heat lost from the AC to the thermometers and through the insulation of the AC itself. Anyhow, the AC cools down the attic, the bedrooms and the hall by about 5 degrees, which is quite nice. And just to be clear, because there was a lot of confusion about that in the comments on my previous videos, what is a unit of power? This power can be anything, heat, electricity, sound, light, etc. So what is not just restricted to electricity? Okay, so when the panel and the AC are both turned on, the amount of energy that is pumped into the hot tub is at max around 3600 watt. That's almost as much power as I can drain from one electricity group. And at one point the temperature of the hot tub became so high that I needed to cool it down with some improvised forced evaporative cooling and keep it open at night because a tub that is 40 degrees is just not that comfy. So all the figures aside, the fact is that the panel can keep the hot tub at around 32 degrees Celsius when the sun is out every day. Above that temperature the tub just loses too much energy due to evaporation. And when it's cloudy from time to time, the tub will stay at around 25 C. And when the AC is on, I need a separate cooling system so I don't boil off my skin. I'm actually thinking of installing a boiler that can be heated by the panel and the AC, so I have nice hot water for showering and stuff. All in all, for the past three months, I did not need to heat up the hot tub with the wood stove at all, which saved me about six wheelbarrows of wood. Okay, that's it for this video and for this shed. 
In the past 10 years I made a lot of things in here and although I'm happy that I will have a much bigger workspace when I'm done, it still hurts a little that I need to demolish it. But the new one will be made out of stone, it will be insulated and more than twice as big as this one. And I'm going to prepare the foundation so I can later dig out the basement underneath. When the new workspace is finished I will start digging out the basement and make videos about that project. I'm going to build most of the shed myself which of course take up a lot of my free time. So for the coming months I won't post long edited videos like this one but probably a lot of shorts so you guys stay updated on my progress. So I'd like to give a special thanks to all my Patreons and please consider becoming a Patreon. Thanks for watching and please let me know what you think about all of this and see you next time.